don't tell yourself that you have a whole hour to sit here. Just tell yourself you've got this breath, this breath coming in, this breath going out. That's all there is. It's this breath. As for the breaths for the rest of the hour, don't even think about them right now. Pay attention to them when they come, when they go, you're done with them. There's only this breath. Your meditation needs that kind of focus if you're going to see anything clearly. And this attitude also helps you cut through a lot of the, the garbage at the beginning of the meditation. We may have experienced in the past how long it takes for the mind to settle down. But you should have a sense of where that mind, where the mind goes when it does settle down. Why can't you go there right now? Once you're there with the breath, then try to maintain that balance. And again, it's just this breath, this breath, and see what you can do with this breath. How deep can it go? How good can it feel? How much of your attention can you give to it? You find that the mind is kind of like a command post where you're receiving information from all different sorts of things. And it has this tendency to reserve some of its attention for other things, aside from what you're trying to focus on right now. And what you want to do as you're meditating is to bring all your attention to the breath. So if you find any part of the mind or the body that's not connected with the breath, well, get it connected. Add it on. Let it build up as much as you can with each breath. The more fully you can be in the present moment, the better. One moment of full intention is better than a whole hour of just drifting around. And of course, a whole hour of full intention is better than just one moment, but you can't do a whole hour all at once. You can do, just do the one moment, so give yourself fully to this moment. Don't hold anything back. This quality in the text is called citta. It's one of the bases for success. Giving the breath your full attention. Not saving part of your attention for the next breath, just everything for this breath. After all, as the Buddha says, how do you know how much longer you're going to live? There's that sutta where the, he asks the monks, how often do you remind yourself of death every day? And one monk says, well, I remind myself, if I only have one more day to live, I can do an awful lot in terms of the practice. Someone else says, if I had half a day left to live, I could do a lot in terms of the practice. And it goes down and down and down. To finally, you get to one monk who says, I keep telling myself, if I have one more breath to live, I can do a lot for the practice. And the Buddha says, okay, that's the person who's uncomplacent. Everyone else, he said, counts as heedless, complacent. What this means is that in one breath you've got everything you need to focus on everything you need to do a lot in terms of the practice. If we let the practice get automatic without giving it our full attention, this breath comes and that breath goes, and we didn't get much out of any of them, thinking somehow that we can make up in terms of many breaths for the fact that we didn't really pay attention to any one particular breath very much. It's like presenting an argument. Some people think that if they can present 50 weak arguments, that counts up to one good argument. Or 50 weak reasons for something, that counts up to one good reason. But it doesn't. What you need is just one really good reason. One really good argument, and you win the day. And it's the same with the meditation. One really good breath, one really intent, intently experienced breath, fully experienced breath can show you a lot more than an hour or two of 
superficially viewed breaths, the breaths where you're just skimming across the surface, hoping to get to the end of the hour. Try to immerse yourself. The word gayakata sati, mindfulness immersed in the body. That word kata there means means immersed, like someone sitting immersed in darkness. I've forgotten what the word for darkness is, but it's like, it ends with a kata in the same way. Try to s totally surround yourself with the breath. Be aware of the breath on all sides. And that way you don't have room to hold anything back. And things begin to open up in the body, things begin to open up in the mind. Sometimes you can begin to detect that there's even a physical sense of somehow you're pulling yourself back from your body, or you've been doing that. Pulling yourself back from being totally immersed in the present moment saving part of yourself for something else. Well, as you're meditating, you let go of that sense and let yourself jump right into the present moment. In the same way you jump into a big pool of water. Because everything you need to know for the purpose of awakening is right here. And if you hold back, it means you're missing some of the elements. So as far as you're concerned, right here, right now, this is all there is, the right here, the right now, this breath, this breath. If you see any thoughts arising in the mind about how much longer we're going to be sitting here or how, much longer, how, how long we have been sitting here, just let them blow away. Think of the breath going right through them, not giving them any space to land. And you find that as you stay fully immersed in the breath like this, a lot of the other good qualities that you want to develop in the practice come along without you having to think about them. You don't have to worry about directed thought, you don't have to worry about evaluation, you don't have to worry about all those wings to awakening. As you fully give yourself to the breath, fully give yourself to the present moment, they all come. And Paul Poot tells of the time when he was studying with the John Sao. The John Sao's meditation instructions were simplicity itself. Just focus on the meditation word. He said, that's all you have to know. Well, and Paul Poot, being a kind of person who liked to read a lot, he would read a John Singh's meditation guide and talks about establishing mindfulness and all kinds of other things things that you have to do in order to get into your meditation. So he asked Ajahn Sao about this, and Ajahn Sao said, look, when you focus on the Bhutto, that all that happens in and of itself without you having to decide where mindfulness is and where you're going to establish it. When you allow yourself to stay fully with the Bhutto, then all those other good qualities come along as well. It's the same with being with the breath. Just fully give yourself with the breath. If you want to say the meditation word along with it, think of every little cell on your body saying, Bhutto, Bhutto, until the mind is really with the breath. Then you can let go of the meditation word and be fully immersed in the breath. And then you don't have to get out. You don't have to pull out. You don't have to pull back. Just stay right here. And bit by bit you find yourself adjusting to staying right here. And that's the direct of thought, and that's the evaluation. But it's simply a matter of being right here, being fully aware right here. And if the fullness of your awareness develops over time, that's fine. You don't have to pace yourself. Just give yourself fully right now. And if you give yourself fully right now, then if it grows fuller in the sometime later down, down the road here in the hour, fine. If not, you don't have to save yourself for the last lap. It's not like being a runner who has to pace himself. This is one of those cases where you give yourself fully to the breath right now. You don't have to worry about what you're going to have left at the end of the hour. The, give, the full giving right here is going to give you the strength you're going to need to see, your, see yourself through the hour. So as you're meditating here, there's just this one thing, this breath. That's all you need to know.